Oh, there's a thing in the way. Hello, hello, hello. We're early. Just a little. Oh, well. All the cool saying. kids. 15 seconds. I'm just saying. I was trying to think of some seconds. reason why being early would be good. Because we're never are. We never no, are. That's what so I was yay. Saying. Why is there a first? Why Wait, is there a first? Yay for punctuality. No. 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 So it's Wednesday, episode one, one zero, zero seven. seven. Ooh, that was loud. That was very loud. That was a good one. You're obsessive with that. Episode. That was a good one. I enjoyed so it. So welcome to Wednesday. Hello. Cheersy McTearsy. Clank it a clank. I hope you're enjoying a beverage, and if you're not, for some reason, feel free Enjoy to join us. Enjoy that cup of coffee or herbal tea, or too. coffee or tea or whatever. I had herbal tea We last are night. safe from the hurricane. This hurricane is far away from us, but God bless all the people in the yes. handle because this was a nasty one. Yes, so I really hope that everybody left like they were supposed to, and I hope and pray that your, um, your homestead is okay, um, but, you know, this is not it. Florida has had How a crazy... That weather can be so big that we're literally like, what's the drive from here? Like six hours? Because it's three hours. Three over. We're six hours away from where the storm is hitting. It's been cloudy here for three days. Oh, and they're flying by. I mean, yeah. you're just being sucked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, no, we, because somebody texted me and they were like, are you having weather from this? And it's like, no, no, but but it's been windy, but, you, but windy for three and days, cloudy, and, and that's we are weird. very far from We're where far. this is. We're six and a half hours away, and we have seen um, wind and rain from that, and so the storm was massive, and it was quick. This one was fast. In some ways, that's good because yeah. Yeah. it doesn't have yeah, yeah, time yeah. to. But anyway. it was, but it. But, but Pray for the we're praying for you, Panhandle. We, we, we and believe... And Georgia and everywhere else that's yes, going to get believe, this. Believe you me, we um, we have been through them and wouldn't wish it on our... We wouldn't wish it on anybody. No. Um, so tonight is episode 107 of Wine's Day, which literally means nothing other than it's October 10th. But I thought you guys gave me a really tough time a couple of weeks ago when I confessed... Yeah. In front of all of my friends on the internet. I need to know what you're confessing to again. Like, I eat moldy things. That's so gross. It's still gross. It's not gross. You don't mean you eat moldy things that are supposed to be moldy like blue cheese. You just mean like if you take out a block of cheddar. So walk us through what you mean by you eat moldy things. Sometimes, you don't just eat the mold. You're not like trying to get extra penicillin. No, but if the bread has a little moldy spot, you cut it off and you finish your sandwich. Mm -hmm. Okay. If the cheese looks a little moldy, you cut that chunk and you move along. No, you're just cutting the visible mold. Correct. <sighs> so... Doesn't it taste bad? Nah. So, here's like the thing. Like stale? <laughs> well, the <laughs> bread was obviously... This cheese is crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but no. But so, yesterday... No, I'm not the husband. No, clearly. We both have husbands. We do. Um, different one. We're not, a, <laughs> we're not a thruple either. So yesterday was National Moldy Cheese Day. It's a unique holiday that is observed each year on October 9th. Um, and then it gives us some background. A cheesemonger. <gasps> that's what they're called. That was what my job should have been. You should have been a cheesemonger. A, cheese a cheesemonger is a person who specializes All in cheese. All I can cheeses. picture is those guys that throw the fish, the fish mongers. Oh, but now I'm picturing some guy like throwing gouda. <laughs> <laughs> okay, reel it in. I, that's what I'm picturing. What they, do you do? I'm a cheese monger. What? They, but they specialize in cheeses, butter, and dairy products. Mm. They take the, um, they basically can tell you what mold is okay on a cheese. Because cheese can be eaten moldy, by the way. Okay? So, first and foremost, everybody who is throwing me shade. They're all telling you it's nasty. <laughs> Don't eat the moldy. Listen. <laughs> Some cheeses have red or brown tinged mold. Jennifer cleaned her fridge the last time you talked about this. <laughs> Listen! Some cheeses have red and brown tinged mold. Those are offensive. Please throw them away. Don't eat the red mold. I don't, don't think eat I the need red a reminder mold. not to eat red and... Okay, but if you have blue or green colored moldy cheese in the fridge, you can keep that. No, don't tell people that. It says right here a cheesemonger did it. According to a cheesemonger. Cheesemonger.com. You know what? According to Eric at That's Inappropriate, according to the Fruity Pop, don't eat moldy things. Just don't. If Be you, on the safe side. So here's the thing, though. If you want more ridiculous advice that's probably crap, Make sure to tune in each week and uh, download the new episodes of Take It or Leave It, our new podcast 
called Take It or Leave It, an advice-ish podcast for parents. I host it with Tiffany from Juggling the Jenkins. We're going to throw the link in here. You need to check out our podcast. It's awesome. Hysterical. Today, I um, pretended to be the count from Sesame Street. I'm just saying, things things were fun. So anyway, so you definitely want to check out the podcast. We put the caption on this wine today. Did we spell it bad? Probably. They said, it looks like one of our children did it. Dave! What does it say? <laughs> the kids stop Deborah, I've and never s- your glass when as the night joined us. Oh my god! <laughs> that was my husband! It's this thing. It changes all the words. Dang. It changes the words. We Have look, some wine. We look like Is that that's uh, where that's where our, the officialness went out the, the officialness. The officialness. That's where, went out that's the where the uh, professionalism went out the window. Beverly just admitted she has cheese in the fridge, it's moldy. <sighs> right now, Beverly? Right now, currently. Right now? Throw it away. Nicole loves to take it or leave it. Thank you. Today's I've, podcast I've, is great. Thank you. I have opened, you know how the um you get the cheeses in there in the different baggies? Yeah. I've opened cheeses, saw mold on one set of the cheese, and thrown out all the cheese I bought at the same time just because I'm like, it's old. Ugh, no, it's still fine. Even all right. from other bags. All right, so moving on. Make sure to check your cheese for red mold. If if it has it, that's offensive, says the cheese she monger. Throw it out. Rule, just... Just avoid the mold. Oh, it's fine. All right, moving on. What is the most expensive hotel night? Don't lie. Okay, We're I will on. Lie. Do I not, will not lie. I'm looking. Look at me. Make eye contact. Don't lie. I'm not We're on lie. the internet. I'm not gonna lie. What is the most expensive hotel room you've ever paid a night for? Like you've ever stayed for in? one night. For one night. I paid a lot of money to do one on South Beach in Miami on Fourth of July, I and want it was the price. like. Six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. You spent six hundred dollars. And I remember feeling super guilty. Yeah. Okay. So, so you spent six hundred dollars yes. a night for one night. I didn't like. Stay. I've never spent that. Just saying. Uh, just three fifty, maybe. Well, I we've spent three fifty before. But but I, the more important rule is what's your hotel minimum because I have a minimum. <laughs> like. Well, we can we been, can circle like, back. We, Whoa. We can circle back, but I think we spent three fifty one time at a conference that we had to go to and had no other choice because the hotel, that's where everybody was staying, so it was kind of forced our hand. Um, I'm a 99 to 120 a night kind of gal. Yeah, that's right in my I range. can hang right that's, at the 99 to hang. 120 a night. Because that's like what a was, holiday what in What was range. Stanktona? Oh. It was like 70. It was maybe 60. <laughs> and we got there and I was like, nope. What did, well, what did it say? Nope. No, I'm no not. crime here. There's no crime. There's a sign that said no crime. There was definitely like, it. Oh, God. At one point in that room that we stayed in in Daytona Beach, there ha- I guarantee there was a murder in that hotel room. There was a murder There was stain. a weird stain. There was and a murder all stain. The, all, the, all the hotel rooms had like nine dead bulbs. It was so <laughs> scary. Was like, why are there so many? It was so scary. But no, but I agree. There, I do have a hotel minimum. It's $99. Um... But so, do you want to guess what the most expensive hotel room in the United States is for one night? $20,000. You can stay at the Mark Hotel. I just read how much. That's ridiculous. You can stay at the Mark Hotel in Manhattan for $75,000 a night. So wrap your brain around this. That's criminal. And past guests include who? Bernie Madoff? Like, who is staying there? I don't know. But listen to this. The hotel was recently renovated in 2009. It ought to be, they ought to renovate it in a couple months for $75,000. The hotel room, which is located on two floors of the hotel, the 16th and 17th floor, has 10,000 square feet of interior space. Five bedrooms, four fireplaces, six bathrooms, and two wet bars. The living room has 26-foot ceilings, and there is an outside 2,500-square-foot rooftop terrace bar that overlooks Central Park. Of course there is. Anybody want to stay there now for <laughs> for seventy five thousand dollars? You could oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. Two nights wait. you could buy a small home. Wait. It also has huh. a room in the front that can be converted into a ballroom for events. Seventy five thousand so, so you've gotta have quite you've gotta have quite the fundraiser. Girls trip. No. Girls <laughs> trip Mia. <laughs> Mia, stop it. Girls trip. If anybody stays there, I want to come. <gasps> Natalie says, I stayed in a hotel room. There were blood on the sheets. No discount, nothing. Just switched my room. <laughs> ah! Ah! Run. Run. Don't stay in that hotel. Okay? Gross. Seriously. Seriously. But wow, no. Wow, that's but, crazy. But I'm just saying, who... 
Who is like seventy five thousand dollars? I feel like for seventy five thousand dollars, you can be like, I'd like you to paint this well, a different I mean, color before I stay. Ten thousand square feet. Ten thousand square feet. That's significantly larger than our home. Significantly oh, that's several times. That's it's, six of our houses. That's, that's yeah. excessive. So five of but our it's houses. Five, five it's of five our of houses. Them. It's five I was of close. Your houses. Yeah, five but even, houses. But even that, that's like ten, fifteen thousand dollars for a night for your house. It the math is just it boggles the mind. So anywho, if you want to go and be fancy in New York, you think York, they have Groupons? Yeah, there's definitely <laughs> I'm sure a they Groupon. Group on that. They definitely have a Groupon. But um, yeah, but seriously, this hotel is. And the thing is, the thing that I read about in this article, it actually gets booked. It gets legitimately booked. People are spending $75,000 a night. That's crazy. It gets booked. Who think of how many people you can help. Money. Who makes that? I mean. I don't know. Are we, talk, are we talking about the 1%? Then we're talking about the 1%. I think we're talking about they're the They're not 1%. our friends. We don't know them. I think we're it's talking okay. about the 1%. We can talk about them because they're not here watching Wednesday, okay? But yes. I feel like the screen's going to go dark and Mark Zuckerberg. But my thing is, no. if you Mark can Zuckerberg that, could totally stay there. If you Mark can afford that, you probably have a penthouse in New right. York anyway. Right, you have your own. You probably my have your guess own. is they're renting that for some sort of a function. Or to be like, come hang out with me before... Such and such event. The AMAs. Or I the, read it said Met Ball. Met Gala. Before the Met Gala. Yeah, that makes sense. I come usually on. do that. Come, come eat moldy <laughs> cheeses with me. Candace yeah. stayed in a hotel for thirty-five dollars a night. And smelled of urine. <gasps> Those no. stains on the no, sheets. No, 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 no. One time when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I walked into no, this. No, the answer is no. Shit. We went to Disney with no plans. And, of course, we get there, and it was some kind of holiday weekend, and we couldn't get a hotel room and whatever. We finally found a place with a room that was available, and we were checking in. We go into the bathroom, and there's this little styrofoam cup with soap on the <laughs> Liquid. Ew! <laughs> and we're like, what? What is this? And she was like, well, we didn't have any other soap. And I was like... As like a nine year old, I'm like, we're out. we're out. I was like, we're out, we're out. I don't need to go back to Disney. We're done. Yeah. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's just, it's insane, right? Like, and, and but some people have that kind of money. I don't know them. We don't obviously travel in the same circle or both work out of Planet Fitness together Ooh. for $10. That's a nice point, point, Martha. Gym membership. Martha said you earn a few points on your card on that one. Ah, so that's some points. That's some right. points. All Yikes. right, moving on. Yikes. Um, so, <clears throat> Do you ever get incessant phone calls, like over and over and over I again? I've been called by the healthcare enrollment line so many <laughs> times. I know they're the worst, but so get this, right? Nobody likes getting dialed by some weirdo who doesn't say anything when you pick up. You know the heavy, the heavy breather. breather. <sighs> Nobody wants that. I know it's you, Kyle. Oh, Kyle, stop breathing on my phone. Okay, so here's the thing, though. This is what happened to a, a marine mammal vet in Hawaii, she's, she kept getting phone calls where it would call and hang up, call and hang up, call. Well, then she realized that the calls were coming from her veterinary clinic. Oh my. So she started to panic and she assumed there's some sort of a seal related emergency here on the island because she is a seal doctor. She's a marine mammal vet. Denarian. I want to be so specific kind of vet that it's like, what do you take care of? Seals. But she does. Only she likes seals. She specializes in the it's, seals. It's like, what are most uncommon? I see the seal bark. The cough. seals. Yeah, ah. well, that's a thing. <laughs> so she says, I was getting lunch, so I thought maybe somebody had a seal related question. <laughs> I picked up silence. But whoever was calling mm -hmm. me wasn't going to quit. I received nine phone calls in a 15 minute period. I began to panic. There must be a seal emergency, she says. Seal emergency. So she... What was there, like, a pile up at the beach? <laughs> like, I don't like, what, what's the seal emergency, right? Like... I don't know. Hello? Thank this you. Is the, this is the CDC for seals? <laughs> <laughs> There's a really bad case of seal flu. Michelle just said, sorry, I'll stop calling you and doing that heavy breathing thing. <laughs> All right. So she gets back to the vet clinic. She heads back. She starts looking for injured seals immediately because she assumes they're all bringing injured seals to us. No. There's a pile she up goes, on the 405. I arrived. All is calm. I asked, did anybody call me? No. Everybody at the office? No, we didn't call you. She's standing in the office. She says, I got another call. She looks at her phone and she says, it's coming from inside the office. <gasps> This is Halloween, right? Okay. <laughs> so she starts freaking out and she's going from room to room, room to room, room to room. She finally makes her way into one of the labs and finds a tiny little gecko has crawled onto the 
video screen phone pad. It had oh, literally... Oh, and he's just, like, stepping on the keys? Stepping and No, it was stepping on the video screen, and it was calling everybody in the Rolodex ah. of the vet clinic. <laughs> they said it had literally caught, made thousands of phone calls like in an hour time period. He was period. angling for a job. <laughs> The gecko market is tough. Look. He's, he's out of the car insurance business. Right. He was literally, and people were, then people got pissed, right? And they're calling back and they're like, stop calling me. I have no, I have no seal related injuries here at my home. But seriously, they were ticked. And this, this gecko or geico, no, it's gecko, right? Gecko. That's not a geico. Geico appreciates that you've. <laughs> I thought I feel like it was I, called a geico. I, I, it's a win for their I feel like PETA is crying. Yeah. And geico is like, yes. Pretty much. <laughs> Yes. Pretty much. But I'm just saying, this gecko made thousands of phone calls uh, off of the uh, this vet clinic in Hawaii. So there you go. What are you going to do? Oh, Apparently, wow. he has a new game. He's a, got some skin in the game, and he's going to be a telemarketer because he's very good Hello, at it. Hello, this is Gecko. How can I help you? Hi. I know I'm actually a gecko. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm a gecko. What is my name? <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. Hold on. <laughs> Hashtag Geico Gecko? Geico Gecko. Mm. Because that was really hard to say that three times fast. Geico, All right, Geico. moving on. All right. An ol, that's what they're called. It's an anole. Mm -hmm. Is that what they're called? Is that the name green for lizards. a fancy gecko? Oh, green lizards. Look at the you. bright green lizard. Fancy gecko well, name. Thank you, Jen. Is that that's not what they're called here, right? We yeah. just have garden variety lizards. They're anoles. That's anoles. an anole? Oh god, I got anoles called. Green and brown. Right? Green yeah. Brown. Don't eat the moldy ones. When I was little, we used to catch them, and they clip, so you could like clip them to things. I clipped them to my earlobe. Yeah. Clipped them everywhere. They let go. All right. Ew. Weird. Ew. I didn't go there. You, you did. It's an eyebrow. You did. And You're the dirty the bird. They scared the crap out of my sister, so I throw them in a room and then close the door. <laughs> You're terrible. I was really bad. All right. Um. Let's see. Where are we going to? Because I don't remember this story. Oh. Got it now. So recently, a study was published in the Journal of Learning and Behavior that... Can I... I want to release a journal. Can we just... What? There's so many journals. On what? The Journal of Eric Thoughts. Like, I just... There's... That's everybody a has thing. a journal, and they're always releasing studies. Like, I just want to release some studies. If I ask 100 people a question, I could be like, I did a study. We can take a poll. You want we to can take, take a, poll? a poll. Let's take a poll. Of what? Do... This, this one. We will... The poll will be... Do you think... Dogs are actually as smart as you think they are. Is that That's a, a strange way? question. That's you strange need to reword point. it. Um, do, you think dogs are smart? do we overestimate a dog's do we intelligence? Think, do we think dogs are smart? Do we think dogs are smart? Do we think we dogs just are dumped, smart? We dumped the question down yes. to yes, no. All right. So a recent study published in the Journal of Learning and Behavior suggests that dogs are no more exceptional than any other animal we were breaking on the, the planet. We're breaking our own survey now. We're telling them the answer before. No, but people are not agreeing. What I'm saying oh, is... Oh, this was just some guy. This was, this was one guy who wrote this study, and believe me, Twitter has had its way with him, because he basically said dogs are no more smarter than any other animal when it comes to canniness and intelligence. Now, I don't know how they tested this, but I have news for you, okay? I have a dog. She's extremely intelligent. Mickey would read Eric Thoughts. <laughs> of the course. Journal. The journal. The journal of. But no, I believe dogs to be exceptionally smart. My dog. I feel like my dog's really dumb. Your dog is stupid. My dog is dumb. My dog is very smart. Very, very, very smart. Okay? Paisley I'm just going to show down. you a couple of pictures of my dog okay. and let you see the luxurious wonderfulness that is my Daphne. Can okay. we throw a couple pics up? They're up. Look at the poles coming in. Do you think dogs are intelligent? No way, of course. Oh, I get to okay. vote? No, you don't. Yeah, I do. I'm voting. You just voted no way. My dog's dumb. But mine isn't. Mine's so here's uh, my specimen. Yeah. Here's this. Here's my specimen. This is Daphne. Do you have... She's she a delight. with us? No. Some days she <laughs> See, has she's off... she's smart. She ran away. She's like, they're going to be loud. Some days she has off days and she looks more like this. Can we show an off day for Daph? Okay. Oh. She looks a little bit. That little what, bit that's more not like her this. fault. That's because you shaved her. <laughs> and then my dog will do really fun things like come and sit at the table. <laughs> she just that's... she jumps up and she sits at the table. Let's see a picture oh, of her sitting yeah. at the table. That that's. Oh 
Oh, that's my son. Yeah. I'm sorry. That Oops. is my son. Oops. And he is actually in a Scooby-Doo costume. He just likes to dress like a dog. But I truly think... Isn't he cute? Come on, that's a cute kid. Okay. And, he, and he, he's, he's pocket-sized, so he was able to wear that toddler costume for like four years. Yeah, but he's a delight. But so, no, um, really depends on the dog and the person. Well, my dog is very smart. Does that mean I'm, I'm failing to teach my dog things? No, she was just... Be- I don't think the lights are all on. Uh-uh. We house broke She's her. sweet. That was a big victory. She's very sweet, but um, no, no. My dog is very smart. But people on Twitter got really upset. People on Twitter got super ticked, and they were like, you don't know anything about my dog. My dog drives a car. Well, okay, but I will tell you, 10 so people are lunatics. 91% of the viewers said yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm in the minority. Yes, 91%. I'm the only one with a stupid dog? No, I think there's definitely... Pre- Why does she look like she a rat? She looks like a rat. Hey! Hey! You know, have you ever watched, um, what is that, where they catch the out swamp, swamp people? The nutria. The and in the off season, they hunt these things called nutria rats. Yeah. There's some kind of big vermin that they have in the yeah. Louisiana area. I, yeah. When they shave Daphne, she looks like a nutria rat. Yeah, well, she like a does. nutria rat that just got out of the grain bin. Yep. She does, but she's very smart. She knows every she's day not. when I, every day when I try to give her her pill, she runs away because she knows she's going to have to take a pill. She won't. She won't. She won't walk out of the bathroom and you lay a towel down so she can walk on the towel. She doesn't like the noise her nails make on the floor, so I lay a towel down so that she can exit appropriately. Oh, my God. (laughs) Every day. I watch this. And then when she comes to stay at my house, she's like, where's my towel? Well, she's, she's very special. She needs special treatment. Don't be like that. All right. Moving on. Um... Okay, I felt really bad for this. So, a man named Chris was spotted by two police officers in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. They came up next to him and they found him crouched down on the side of the road. Are we going to show them the video? No, I, no, no. we can't show the video. Oh my so, God. the police it officers... It was like trauma life in the ER. It was serious, though. But when, so, when they got to the side of the road, the police officer said, what's, what's wrong? And he said, well, I swerved and I hit... That's awesome. What? She- Shelly said, Daphne, should, we should dress her up as Splinter. The Halloween. The rat. <laughs> that would be funny with like that those That would be awesome. And the robe thing. Yeah. The, the kimono. Magento kimono. That's yes. She would look really funny as Splinter yes. the rat. She does look like a rat. <laughs> She's so pretty. Don't stop. She's a little fat too. The, the vet was like, she could lose a few. <laughs> No, Stop. no, you asked about a tumor, and the vet was like, that's a fatty tumor. If your dog was an appropriate weight, that would go away. He did say that. <laughs> and then I ignored you got, him. You got owner shamed. And then I ignored him. All right, moving on. He also said she was delightfully delightfully wonderful, and it was fine. All right, moving on. So the this guy s- s- swerved to try and miss a squirrel, but hit it, oh. right? So he hits this squirrel, he gets, he stops his car, he gets out of his car, and he's literally crouched over, going like this, to the squirrel's chest. So the cops come up and they're like, Bud, what are you doing? And he's like, I kind of hit this a little bit. Well, and, you're, and you're thinking it's going to be something bad, like a dog or something, because he's, he's wearing his hoodie and it, it he's looks... He's all upset. And the beginning it looks like something very shady is going to happen, it's, and then he's it's all like, upset. no, no, I'm giving this squirrel CPR. It's, he's all upset, and then all of a sudden you see him, and he's sitting down there like this, and the cop's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I don't know, CPR, I think. And so he's slamming on this tiny little squirrel, and then he's petting the squirrel, and then he's like trying to move its legs, or whatever. But really, it just devolved from CPR into just squirrel pets. He was doing <laughs> Because he was just petting. like, I'm sorry, I killed you. <laughs> he's like, I'm, sorry, I'm so I killed sorry. You. I'm so sorry. All of a sudden, the cop, the kid is looking at him, they're looking at each other, they look over the squirrel, squirrel pops Boom. up. Pew, runs I think right the off. squirrel was just in shock. I think the squirrel was like, Honda Civic! Ah. That squirrel got back to the like the hole in the tree and he was like, guys, you are never going to believe what just happened to me. <laughs> I just got full it, on it's like It's like the squirrel version of an alien abduction. Mm. Yeah. Mm. He hit me, <laughs> grabbed me. Yeah. There was probe. Punched probed me a lot. I got probed. I was probed. And then he pet me at the end. <laughs> Well, the cop was funny at the end. They high-fived, and he was like, we're going to put you up for the award we give for people who save lives. <laughs> and they're like, yay! And it's like, it was a squirrel. It was a squirrel. It was a squirrel. I, I have, I, was, I have, I I don't know what it is about when you're driving, but like, if, have you ever seen like a squirrel or a bunny get hit by a car? No. I cried. 
I'm sure. I, I broke down. <laughs> I had to pull over. I just saw it. I didn't yeah, even but, hit them. I know, just but, I just watched it happen, and it was so traumatic. I had to stop the car. But but I I tell her, and I I don't know if it's the right thing. Or I think it's I'm saying it's the right thing. When you're going. 60 miles an hour, you, you can't swerve and you can't stop if, if there's a squirrel. You just can't because there's a car I, behind you going to kill you. I, I yeah, like, you have like to be you careful have, because you have to make if, a decision. If there's somebody behind you, you don't want to get You're going to get again. run over. Yeah, so you or you're don't. Gonna cause all a big I know, pile or swerve into oncoming traffic. Because I was on Veterans and I saw a bunny eat it and I was devastated. Yeah, bunnies are cute. I had to stop. Yeah, I, I bet. I bet. I've not recently, although Dave plowed over a pigeon the other day, and I was like, holy crap, you just hit a pigeon. He's like, no, I didn't. I'm like, how did you guys see the feathers? And, we just, and I was like, oh my gosh, and the kids are like, mom, mom. We're just Remember, giving Peta more reasons to cry. When he left his house, the squirrel that she was asking about, he didn't make it. You lied? You hit that squirrel? He ran under I tried to move. You know, so we have lots of oh, small. We live. We live on. We live on agricultural died. estates. So they're like big lots with lots of woods and trees and whatever. We really need some bobcats because there are like whole families of bunnies in my yard when They've I get home. Lot lately. Lots there of bunnies. Been a lot of bunnies. Lots of bunnies and squirrels and whatever. And it's like we need a bobcat to move in and just. Do you see our frog? Clean this up a little. Um, I saw the picture of a frog. We did have a big frog. So an eleven-year-old girl. Um, that was a turtle that just got confused about what kind of animal it was. No, that frog was massive. An 11-year-old girl checked out a poetry anthology in 1934. I was going to say, what 11-year-old girl checked out a poetry <laughs> anthology? <laughs> and apparently, what? apparently it was found by her Robert son. Robert Frost? <laughs> <laughs> it was found by her son during a spring cleaning nine decades later. Um, um, uh, a man escaped a library fine after returning a book that was overdue for 84 years. Oh, that, my friends, is Good Samaritan. So the guy is up in his, in his, in his mother's attic, or grandmother's attic, I don't remember. Uh, mother's grand- attic. Mother's attic, wow. And he was cleaning out boxes, and he comes across this book. When he opens the book, he sees it's a library book. There's a, there's a card in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there's it one of the old school punchy ones? Yes. Yeah. 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 Do you remember those? Yeah. I, I miss those. I don't even read paper books anymore, but I want to do the machine that goes, Dush. So she, he pulls it out. I love how out. she just moves right along. Well, we all, well, if you're old enough to know what that is, yes, I do. I still remember going to the Dewey Decimal, Decimal System and, and doing looking, the numbers. looking for the, for did the you, book. Did, and the library had the little half glasses, like the ones that were like moons, but they I stopped. I think they still, I think most that's librarians still, still wear those. Yeah. I feel like if I was a librarian, I'd have half glasses. You should. With the chain. You should just have with, a half glass. With the chain. The chains a are monocle. necessary. Okay. Yeah. You know a monocle? No. Like, what what is that on Hogan's Heroes like Commander Clink or whatever? Yeah, you should have a monocle. That's a thing. So or he, Mr. Peanut. He gets, <laughs> probably, probably more probably like more that. Accurate. So he looks through and he realizes that the book had been checked out in 1934, and Just he's like, "Oh my ago. gosh, my mom would be so upset that she never returned this book." So what does he do? He takes the book back in, and when the woman calculated it, it was 84 years overdue. What do you think the fee is if they actually made him pay? Seven million dollars. Oh come on, with interest? Mm-hmm. Okay. They said there's no fee. They You're had actually finance the new wing of the library. Yeah, they actually said that the records for that were were actually um, released in 1934, and they basically thought they'd never get the book back. So they yeah, were well, excited. I'm, I'm thinking somewhere around the ten year, ten the de- de- decade mark. You kind of write it. Off. They're, they're when probably they do thinking, that. man, we're gonna charge this guy. We're gonna go stay one night in the hotel. In no, New they York. said stay they waived night. his fee. Yeah, they we're did. gonna go stay for one night at they the did. at the fancy hotel. In they New did, York. they did. But I just thought it was, I thought it was an interesting story. Like he found it and then went to the library where she had. They lived in the same town. Like that's also a nice part of the story too. They lived in the same hotel. That is kind of sweet. So anyway. Um, Have you ever? I found my parents' birds. yearbook. That was hilarious. Yeah. My mom had atrocious spelling <laughs> <laughs> and grammar. Well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> my dad was the bestest boyfriend ever. Oh, that's adorable. I copied it and put it on a, wet, a cake that I got for them. When? When did you do that? Uh, some anniversary, but it was hilarious. I was like bestest. That's I was like, awesome. You did it a couple more years. Stop it. That's adorable and sweet. It was pretty funny. That's adorable. But then when I asked her, I'm like, why did you write that? And she's like, because he had a car. And I was like, <laughs> he had so a you car. were just a liar, too. Well, she was smart.
smart. No, I don't know. All right. So do you know that apparently birds getting drunk is like a very common thing? I didn't know if you knew this. If the holly trees, the ones that get the red berries, if they fall in water and ferment and the birds eat them. So apparently there have been tipsy birds flying into windows in cars after binging on fermented berries. Holly berries. If you have a holly tree, it's hilarious. There's always drunk birds in my parents' backyard. The Gilbert Police Department in Minnesota received a series of strange call calls about confused strangers who appeared to be under the influence. It's believed that an early frost fermented the berries, causing many birds to fly tipsily, tipsily, into cars, windows, and homes. The police, call, the, complete, the police made a statement saying, unless Big Bird is operating a motor vehicle in an unsafe man, manner, please do not call us again. We are not the drunk bird police. Don't call us. So the rule is, drunk birds? If you see a drunk bird. They're free to go. It's cool. <laughs> you it's can cool. fly while intoxicated. You can fly while intoxicated. There's actually no law in the books about that. Leave the birds alone. You don't know their business. Leave them be. Okay? But people were like you frantically don't, don't calling. Don't to give them like a soft nest to like sleep it off? They were frantically no? calling. It was like, 911, what's your emergency? I have drunk birds everywhere. <laughs> or it's like you have, to, you have to like supervise them in the bird bath. It's yeah. like, I don't want anybody to drown. I don't know. This one is making a very weird noise, and the other one is it's licking like a, her leg. It's like a like, bird frat house. All I know Seriously. is my parents have a holly tree in the backyard, and the ducks eat it sometimes, yeah. and they get and they walk like Sideways. their little waddle really? feet are like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, they just get drunk. As yeah. long as they stop eating them, they'll be fine. They say. Yeah. So it's actually. Where can I get a holly tree? <laughs> I, I don't think you. I, I don't. Can do I think that. they're poisonous. Yeah. I don't think you please should really don't eat, eat holly berries. Um, holly berry. Holly, holly berry. berry. Oh, it's berry? snowing in Minnesota berry? right now? That's terrible. Oh, snow. it's snowing. You know, places. Crystal Almond Milk was just talking about how there was snow was. in um, North Dakota, yeah. In the Dakota? In the Dakotas. In one of the square states, yeah. Yeah, the Dakotas. Yeah, you betcha. So we've got Florida Man. Oh, Sissy from Copenhagen, Denmark. Copenhagen, Copenhagen. Denmark? Copenhagen, Quatch. What? Sissy Quatch. Quatch. Sissy Quatch? What was her name? On. No, that's not Saskatchewan. Invite the birds to Wines Day. <laughs> we should. I, you know, Denmark, I, my my family has roots there. You say so. I want to do we a 20... We took the genetic I want to do a 23 in me and see what this is. I'm a Heinz 57. Because I'm thinking we I should do, do think it would be yours fun. and mine and then really figure out what the hell's going on with our kids. I, I do think it's funny that if you do, if two relatives get the test done, they can compare them and say like, here's the genes you share. Uh -huh. I feel like it's all the crazy ones. We do. Yeah. I'm just saying. All right. Florida man. A Florida gas station owner says she is battling a bizarre problem. Customers are using her microwave to heat urine. Oh, Florida. <laughs> Parul Patel, who owns a BP gas station and convenience store in Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville. Said, we just visited. Jacksonville. She said she's sick and tired of random people walking in and heating up urine in her microwave. I don't even know what I would say if somebody heated up pee in my microwave. She said, she said, it's gotten so bad, I had to post a sign on the microwave that said, only for food, do not warm your urine. Oh, and then who wants to heat food in there? Once she hangs that sign, when is nope. any more food ever going nope. in that microwave? Nope. As soon as I saw that sign, I'd be like... Next gas station. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Next. Next. What if you need a hot pocket? Nope. nope. Not out of the urine, Mike. Nope. Not out of the urine, Mike. So in the story it said that she started noticing it when, when she heard a pop and saw some lady take a white container because the lady had synthetic pee in a container and it blew up in the There's microwave. synthetic pee? I guess. I didn't even know it. it was a thing. Apparently, the gas station is very close to a lab core where people <laughs> go to get their urine tested <laughs> for, for employment. For employment. Florida Some man. people are are taking other people's urine. It's not even theirs. They've but stolen I like urine. I feel They're like heating it up and like, then walking into I lab feel core. Like heating up. This oh my urine. gosh. Think, look, the microwaves always surprise me. Like, anytime I try and heat up, like, my stuff for tea or anything and I make it, I always make, like, lava 
temperature water. I make my tea in the coffee pot. So I always make like lava temperature everything. And then it's like, okay, so you're turning in this pee that's like 400 degrees. That's not <laughs> suspicious at all. I have lava pee! <laughs> it's like, this is totally normal. It's like, sir, this cup is melted. Like, no, 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 no. no. Your fever! Was, yeah, I, ran, I ran here. I ran. It was all- I ran. How do you go over to a lab core and then be like, your body temperature is 3,968, sir? <laughs> And and then but so you're then, like going in for your feet test with those oven mitts of love. <laughs> the neoprene. I know. Like get out of here. I used to make I used to make scrambled I eggs. I thought they in the made microwave. you. Yeah, I still you make can. scrambled eggs you in the can. microwave. I still but here's my question. I thought they made you pee in front of them. If it's a, if it's for drugs, I think they do. Because I got in a fight with my lady at the physical this year because she was like, no, no, I need to be in here for this. And I was like, no, no, you don't. This is my physical. Get out. I thought, though, I thought, though that you had to, like, like I thought they had to watch you pee if it was for employment. Someplace. If it's, if it's, if they're checking you for drugs, I think someone, like, I don't know that they, like, watch you pee. I think they just kind of stand in the doorway and make sure you're not taking hot pee out of your purse. Like, Ew! Ew. I guess they just stick it in their pockets and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm just pouring I'm this. out. I'm totally out. Lava, lava urine and, into this cup. And, oh, no. So now they're sharing how much time they think you need to microwave the pee for. No, no, no. You only do it for 15 <laughs> yeah. seconds. Ah, this is hilarious. I never, I'll never use a gas station microwave I don't yet. think I could ever microwave anything. I'm just worried anything. because what if you need a Hot Pocket? No. Don't have, first of all, don't eat a Hot Pocket. Do you remember when we pulled they up? They have them in the gas no. station though. You can heat remember them Remember that gas station we pulled up to and the big poster was a hot dog wrapped in bacon? Yes. Oh. The bacon dogs. So bacon dogs. Bacon so dogs. that sounds healthy. That was so exciting. We ate everything at that gas station. <laughs> <laughs> what did you have for lunch? A bacon dog? A bacon dog and was some it? gas station Yes, sushi. but was it out of the urine microwave? I don't know. Yeah. So apparently the news station tried to call LabCorp for comment. They did not respond. <laughs> they definitely know Hot Pocket Pee. Uh, they definitely know that they've had some microwaved urine from across the street. How do you not know? Yeah, her husband had to do one, and they they stood in there with him. I think they. Yeah, do I think that. that's a thing. So, you know what? When when we were adopting Mason, they did. They they had to like stand in with me while I went to make sure I wasn't on drugs. Oh yeah, well that makes they sense. They check you. Well, that makes make, sense. Yeah, so I. They guess. drug test you in the hospital when you're giving birth. They te- they test you to make sure you're legit. You're cool. Tina says they have a bag with a tube for men, so you can like h- hide it like it's like a camel back. <laughs> pee in it. <laughs> oh. So here's a story that so I heard. You just get in, you're like. Uh, <laughs> so here's a story that I heard on the way home, and we didn't have time to put it in. But apparently, a man in Michigan or Minnesota, it was an M state, could have been somewhere else, I don't know. Okay. People worked at LabCorp, and yes, if it's a drug screen, they, they have to There be you in go. There. So he got arrested for doing something bad, something that he shouldn't have been doing, and he was put on house arrest for a year. It was pretty bad if it was for a year. A year. So he so during that time when you're on house arrest, you have to wear the ankle monitor. It's part of your probation because it sets an alarm and you're only allowed to go so you're only allowed to go during certain hours for work and then then you have the You have to be back home. You have to be home and the mon, and the ankle monitor monitored you, okay? So what did this guy do? He got, he was smart. So he learned how to take the ankle monitor off and on without triggering without it. triggering it. So what did he do? He made a YouTube video, a tutorial to show other people oh, how to do it. Oh, what a moron! <laughs> what a moron! So then he put it up on YouTube, and it got like a bajillion hits. And what then, an idiot! And then the he's police, going to jail. They did. The police showed he's up. He's going there, to jail. And they were like, "Hey, you want to show people how to take off their ankle monitors?" Clank clank. <laughs> ha! Back to jail. And it's like, how do you even argue if, when you call your attorney? It's like. Did you do it? It wasn't yeah, me. Yeah, I recorded it. It's <laughs> and, on YouTube. And it had 5 million views, right? It's like, come on, you're screwed, dude. Like, so here, yeah, that's all. Go screwed. directly to jail. You're do screwed. not. You it's c- called a Wizinator, Eric. We need to Google this. There's a device called a Wizinator. Oh, my. I, I think I need to know more about the Wizinator. I don't know. Ew, I'm not I'm not wearing any pouches with pee. <laughs> that is so gross. All right, so you have to really need to pass that pee test to want to have And then how do you ask a friend casually like, "So <laughs> <laughs> So hey, I've uh, got this big interview coming up. When do you, you think uh, you could when you go to the bathroom? this cup for me?" 
I don't know. Have penis wizinator. Yeah. Oh, please, please load up. Please load up my wizinator. Fill up my I don't think you have to load up the wizinator for them. And then what? And then what? So like, I go and interview for a job, and they come out, and they're like, "Well, so the good news is you're not on drugs. Bad news is you're pregnant. Or, or, or <laughs> right? Or it's, or it's like you got it from your mom. It's like, um, we think you're gonna start menopause soon. <laughs> you know? So it's no, like, but it's what if like, your friend has something? They're like, oh, I'll send him in. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> stay there for you. Yeah, your friend. Yikes. Oh man, yikesy I've just gone down a rabbit hole. I'm really interested in yikesy this. Yikesy doodles is the answer to that. Hashtag, Hashtag it wasn't me. Hashtag yikesy doodles. All right, so make sure to, to head over if you are on iTunes, Google Play Music, check out the podcast, the take it or leave it. Um, it's a podcast I do with my good friend Everybody. Tiffany from Juggling the Jenkins. Click the is link. It, it's in the link. It's in the feed. It's in the copy. It's click, in the copy. Click the link. You see, we did Come a poll. We did a poll tonight. We're getting fancy. We now. did a poll Ooh. tonight. We talked about urine and microwaves. I I don't think it gets better than that. Give me taking a break. Did you share the news? I didn't share the news yet, but I'll break it now. I'll break it now. <laughs> I'll break the break breaking news. news now. Breaking news. Next week we are not here. We are um, away. I have a conference next week, so we will not be in town. But after that, we only have a few more wines days until we close out the season. Oh. We are going to take a break for the holidays. Holidays. So. Uh, I feel like I'm just choosing the words. That so I'm in November, on. we're going to. November, November. We're going to take a break. <laughs> and break, we'll, break, break. We'll, we'll be back in, in January. January, January, Fine, January. Seriously. Sorry, I, I was asleep at this way. So don't stress, but we are going to take a break, partly because my female uh, parts are going to be evacuated no, from my body. Brittany's asking if the podcasts are now on Wednesdays. No, we just... No, some... but sometimes. But there's no schedule, but sorry. <laughs> but they do come out every Sunday night on iTunes and Google Play Music. Consummate professionals. <laughs> <laughs> we have one on a Monday. I don't get paid for this. Nobody had to take a pee test that that's inappropriate. Don't come at me. I don't make any money off of this. This is this is freaking free, people. What do you want from me? <laughs> so anyway. You can tune into Chicken Chat on so Sundays. You can tune into Chicken Chat. And make sure to head over and follow the Fruity Pop mm. because he's fruity and also a pop. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. So go on over. Stock Hot Mess Express. We'll be by in a minute. Wait. You have the thing. I don't have the thing. You have the thing. I Touch your Wizinator. Come on. Yes, I'm really excited. We're going to take.